<clears throat> okay, so um, let us get into some announcements. So um, let me get into here. So announcements. Um, we have the Ancient Weapon Design Challenge due on the 8th. Uh, so it's nearing. And I'm taking a look at all the completion rates um, and seeing whether or not you guys might need an extra week. But I only announced the extension a couple days before, so those lazy, lazy Lucy's and lazy Larry's <laughs> are not seeing it as, oh, I've got two weeks, maybe I'll start next week. No, I'm going to actually, if, if, if there is one, if there isn't, I'm going to go straight in. So there most likely might not be an extension, but if I'm seeing really hardworking students who feel like they might need one, I might run two, I might extend it, I might not. Because I still want to be able to give those um, people who completed their submissions and were prompt and were on time, um, uh, they, they, they don't have to wait an extra week to get their stuff looked at. Um, we might have, what did you guys think about the, 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 the mod kind of, uh, the mods coming in with me and talking? Um, did you guys enjoy that? Just hearing everyone's different opinions. So again, I'm not an authority on creativity and the, the fun we had with the, um, design previously when we had both the, uh, uh, all my mods come in is, um, it was nice seeing all of their perspectives and stuff. I might not have mods come in, I might have um, probably just one of them come in or um, another set of students come in just for the new perspective. Um, just any one of our regulars on Discord might be able to pop in and talk about um, uh, what their thoughts are on the submissions. I might just do it alone, um, so, uh, so we, we don't know. <laughs> Nobody expects the Estorag extension. <laughs> You liked it? You enjoyed it? Yes, everyone liked it. Good. I hear the cat. Yeah, she's playing with a little piece of... She's playing with a little ball. Uh, a, a tea wrapper that I wrap up into a ball and we play fetch. Hey, let me throw it for you. Come here. Bring it. You know what this means. No, bring me the ball, doofus. I love you. Um, so, make sure you start yours or finish it up. I don't think it's... I don't think you have time to start it because a lot of people have already submitted some amazing, amazing work. Um, some amazing drafting and thumbnails. Some of these are just looking wild. Um, some of these are exactly what I envisioned. Some of these I would never have thought up on um, my own. And um, just they're looking amazing. So I can't wait to see some of these like finish completely. Make sure that you are done a final draft. It isn't just about a rough concept art. It's a final draft as well. And, uh, sorry, one moment. Um, for the, uh, 14 day challenge questionnaire that I had you guys all ask questions. So what questions do you have about the 14 day challenge? I'll round these up and I will put up the, um, answers on the istabrak.com community tab right here. And if you scroll down, you'll find all the FAQs for the 14 day challenge posted here when I'm done the answers. And if you're enjoying these classes and you want to show some support, Patreon is always available if you just want to join as a watcher. Today was our first patron only critique hour. It lasted two hours and some of my patrons are here. They can tell you all about it. And this is for the apprentice tier for my, for my patrons, for those who are interested. I do have to let you guys know that I give out Patreon rewards on the 5th of every month or a little bit after that. But I delete them after 24 hours because there has been a weird security problem with Patreon. People signing up, taking rewards, and leaving. Um, signing up, getting the invitation to the private Discord, and leaving. And without having to have to pay. Which is really, really gross and really annoying. And I had a big, you know, problem with Patreon and emailing them back and forth about it at the start of the year. But really the only way for me to work around it is to just give out the Patreon rewards and delete them. Um, so there's my, that's my only way around it. If you want to like get on Patreon, get on because you're supporting or get on because you're serious about your education. That's why I offer that highest tier. 
Um, and there's those who take the highest tier who don't even want the rewards. They're just here to support. Patreon isn't like a way to get products. Patreon is to be a patron and you get rewards on the side. Some people join Patreons just for reward, which is fine, but you still have to be honest about it. I understand it's the internet, but it's not as anonymous and dangerous as it used to be. And for those people out there who are still doing this, who are changing their rewards last minute, after they get them changing their pledge so that they don't have to get charged. That's all really, really sleazy stuff. And I'm running a really, really highly pro bono channel. And I don't think I deserve that kind of a, a, a member in my community. Um, and I, I, I think that I'm not really offering some sort of crazy rewards, NSFW portfolio <laughs> reviews or something like that. I'm offering actual education. Either if you're just as a watcher or the highest tier, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm offering you an education. So I'd appreciate like that respect back. If you feel like you can't afford any of this, by all means, don't use Patreon. I still have an entire channel on YouTube that is dedicated to giving you free content constantly. And you just have to go to YouTube and you'll find all my videos there. I, I don't have a better way of critiquing if you pay for me. I critique in the same way whether it's live class or whether it's private class, I, I critique with the same amount of quality I like to think. I don't hold back info. Um, I just, either you get one-on-one -on -one time or not, <clears throat> or you get portfolio reviews on when, it, when you need them or not. That's really the only thing that you're paying for is the privateness of it and the exclusivity of it and the focused only on yourself, the private tutoring. But if you feel like you want to be a part of the channel, but you don't want to be part of it financially, my channel's always been free. It started as free. It will end as free. I will always have these weekly meets for you guys. So uh, February is approaching. The first is when uh, Patreon rolls out the charges. And if you feel like you don't want to be a part of Patreon, just don't click there. And um, let's just try to make it a little bit less toxic for artists and for creators out there. And speaking of which, there was someone who commented recently on my com on my uh, help video, help YouTube struck me thing. Maybe you should stop fighting and insulting people on the internet. You can't win ever. By the way, those pictures, that's nudity. You can try to justify and explain it, but it doesn't mean whatever. I'm not even going to read it all. Um, all I have to say to you, Mr. No, I don't know where you came from. Just, just sod off, man. Sod off. Okay. That's done. Let us go on to our critique hour today. I believe I am using Porch's Studio for one of our little leaning ladies over here. But any questions at all about the, 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 the assignment, the challenge due on the 8th? Anyone curious about anything? I'm not sure we'll get into trouble with titties. I don't sure, I'm, I'm not sure we'll get into trouble with those because it's art and you're designing a character whose breasts are out, that's fine. Um, but uh, um, if you have references that are completely nude, um, maybe just censor them in your in your mood board. Um, if you like, if you have that kind of set up, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble again. I've been very careful. But um, uh, yeah, if you have a if mood board and you have a naked reference, just put some stickies on the boobies. If it's a if it's a photograph, your drawing is not going to get um, affected. So. I'm going to start with this one. Someone get that troll some aloe vera for that burn. I didn't even burn him. <laughs> I didn't even say anything. Um, by the way, he does threaten to dox me, though. He says, next time you piss people off, they're going to dox you. I don't know why they're talking in a Morty voice. But um, next time you piss people off, people are going to dox you. And you better watch out who you piss off. You know, don't piss trolls off. What the hell? <laughs> You ban the trolls, then trolls banned you. They did not. I won, so that's done. But you never know who's on the other side of the wire, and if you piss the wrong guys off, they'll dox you and do even more damage. So I don't know what your problem is. I don't know if you just threatened me, but I'm banning you from my channel, never to be heard from again. Make as many comments. You probably will probably smell your stink in the air if, if you're anonymous. So... This is probably one of the scariest comments I've ever gotten. Someone so on the uh, uh, far side of what it is that I do. Um, how, so, like, misunderstood what I did so much that they think that it was my fault for banning creeps, asking me to show my boobs on my stream. So I'll ban you 
uh, Mr. No. I will ban any more creeps that show up on my channel, just like I said. I'll keep banning. I'll ban again. And then once you're done getting banned and you make a new account, I'll make one for you. I'll ban you then as well. Uh, because creeps like you should stay in the shadows in your mommy's basement, okay? If you just threaten me, I'm probably going to go ahead and um, put a full-on, full-on, uh, you know, report from YouTube. Um, and those, those reports are taken extremely seriously, okay? <clears throat> so, um, I don't know if you guys want to get on this loser, but um, I'm not going to stop you. Okay, so, Portrait Studio. What does this look like? It looks like a mummy crawling towards you. It looks like a zombie gate, part of the zombie walk cycle. Um, it does not look like a leaning person. I'm not sure what reference you picked up, but the discrepancy in the shoulders feels more like an anatomical deformity than it does a lean. So let's lean the lady. Let's go ahead and start leaning. Um, everything is running okay, right? You guys can hear me. <clears throat> M Mr. No, more like Mr. I don't have anything. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Go. <laughs> more like Mr. Ho. Um, anyway, I'm done. Uh, let's go ahead and turn these off. So now you can use your tablet. So I'm using my tablet over here to set up uh, this. Um, oh, right. The right clicks don't work. So be careful with you what you assign right click as. Um, my uh, thing is right click so it's not going to work, my tablet pen. So the girl is leaning so her shoulder is on one side and she's kind of doing that. Uh, so when we're thinking about posing a character in this kind of position, what do we start off first? What starts the pose? What does this? Nobody really poses with one shoulder high and does nothing with their hips. Something happens in the torso first. The torso is stabilized by the legs, so clearly one of the legs bent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off by leaning this lady over here, leaning her body back. So I lean part of the torso forward. And now the torso is not really balanced. Oh, I should have probably done it the other way. So one of the one of the hips is higher than the other. Wait a second. If which which hip here is bent? It's hard to tell, man. I'm gonna have to do it myself. So let's start off with the legs instead. So I'm gonna lean the legs. I'm gonna, dang it. Inward. I'm gonna bend the leg. I'm gonna lean it forward. And then I'm gonna lean this leg a little bit this way so now we have that kind of lean and then maybe you shouldn't ban trolls that are sexually harassing you maybe you should stop bothering them okay there morty get out of here i don't know why i'm picking on poor morty so we have this hip straight causing this hip to be higher than the other one. This hip being lower. So this whole leg can actually be, oopsie, can actually be moved lower by pressing W. And then I'm leaning this back forward. Okay, so let's take a look at the side. I don't want her to have that extreme arc in her back so I'm just bending her forward and then I'm moving her body back so that we have no more of that extensive arc and then when we have so I'm bending this leg only because I'm reading this leg as the bent one I'm not sure why I'm reading this as straight you see what I mean by zombie pose I don't think you read your pose properly so this body's leaning this way this torso is making up for it to maintain balance this way and then that's really it. If she had her arm a little bit higher, then we could say she is kind of compensating for, you know, whatever it is that's happening with her torso with a bit of a higher arm. If she was bending this arm forward and putting her hand on her hip, then the arm would go up. 
but this is the stabilizing leg. This is the leg that leans forward. So let me just undo what I just did with the arm. And sometimes that leg kind of twists out and does a little bit of that just to stabilize. Sometimes this leg is very, very straight and it has to stay, the foot has to stay under your body because it's the center, the line of gravity, the center little line here, that kebab stick that we can't really let collapse. And this, mean that, this means that we can just lean the leg in this way. And I'm just moving the blue line. So we have more of a hip lean this way. And then I'm going to move the whole body by pressing Alt and Select. I'm moving the whole body. Um, where are you? I'm moving the whole body. Um, this way. I'm not sure why the pivot is the arm, Abu. Should be the center line. Just the whole body should be moved forward. Okay, so this is about the only time the shoulder would really be higher than the other. It looks like she's about to step as well. So be very, very careful how you read your reference and just like we did today this is just one pose that we this is just one body like one pose that we did um one instance of posing what you have to remember is that you have to read your reference properly so let me just control yeah i know i got it um and um if you're not posing the torso first no matter what even if you're posing it yourself or you're looking and reading a reference it's the torso first always. If it's a standing gesture, observe the balance of the legs. Write that back to me. If it's a standing gesture, that means that you have to be able to observe the legs balanced against the hips, what they're showing on the hips, um, what they're saying about the uh, spine and how the spine might be moving the torso to compensate how we might be leaning. Um, this is about the only way I see this making sense and I would still tuck this leg in even more, tucking the knee out a little bit more. It's still straight, but a little bit more compensation. The foot rotates inward to keep the heel out. Again, more straight compensation um, for the body. We could lean this body any way we want so she might be leaning like that with the head back straight. Um, so it's just, it's like part of like one walk cycle frame. And no matter what, we're always posing the leg first. We're always doing something with the leg. So let's control D, try something else, try another pose, maybe leaning on a wall. So when someone is leaning on a wall, they have something to carry their weight, but still the torso and the legs, something is happening with the legs first. So if someone's leaning against a wall, their whole body, press a little triangle, their whole body is, um, oopsie, is like this. So we try this first, the whole body is leaning sideways. The whole body has lost its, its, its balance, but there is one leg keeping them from falling down. So you're just gonna have to decide, sometimes it's this leg that I do. Sometimes when I'm leaning against a wall, this leg of mine, bends, but it's also stabilizing under me. This shoulder moves up. Just like that. This neck area stabilizes back up like that. And then this leg gets to do whatever it wants because it's not holding up any weight. So it's just chilling. This leg really has to move all the way in. One of these legs is straight, one is very bent. This one, I believe, is the most bent one. And then the toes just bend forward. And then rotating from the side because everything's different when we rotate. Okay. Now she looks like she's leaning against a wall. And this is only a successful read because we started with the legs. 
and asking ourselves, what are the legs doing? And of course, we asked about the fact that she's leaning up against the wall. She won't really fall over. But she's still not doing like a complete plank sideways on the wall. And this arm kind of feels a little awkward, so I would just have this arm doing something like that or just have it like bending forward. Yeah, we, st we still have to correct what's happening with the, um, the alignment over here, but... Okay, so a little bit of that. I like to have like a more relaxed arm. It's kind of like falling too heavy for itself. So that usually happens when the wrist kind of just gives up. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do for this. This update that's coming up is going to address the posable fingers issue. It's just going to address a lot. It's very misaligned. Um, I'm not sure how. It's, it's between two of these, I guess. And then finally just tucking it in. Okay. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Which one is it? There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to keep it like that. Kind of the arm feels heavy, the elbow isn't that high. And you can tuck this whole section by pressing W. You can tuck it in as if it's tucked way in. Alright, so stretches a bit and it's tucked way in because the wall is straightening her arm. And her arm has to be as straight as the wall because the wall is causing like a con uh, compression. Okay, and you can make this leg bend a little bit more. Where are you? Just turn those on so you can find your indicators. Make the leg bend a little bit more. And always rotate, you guys. Always rotate. You won't be able to tell what's going on unless you rotate. So your problem was that you tried to render at the same time as figuring out the pose at the same time keeping it looking feminine and you just had the world of world of work i'm just going to save this so i don't lose that um lean save oh it's frozen um so do i already have a lean oh i do have a lean lean too save sorry i had a yes okay so I'm not sure what the legs are doing. They seem perfectly balanced. Let's draw some trend lines and blueprints here all over the place and see what we can do. So we've got perfectly level symmetry, but just the, le the arms are doing their own thing. And that means that she came in with like a deformity, like a hunchback deformity, where the, or the, the, the actual you know bone structure is off. Okay, so you really need to, I feel like this belly button got way too much attention. <laughs> I feel like this belly button is the chosen one um, and and uh, if you're not sketching if you're not planning if you're not finding the spine and the, and the and the gesture lines and the symmetry lines there's a lot of planning to be done and controlling this much anatomy and this much this many design units um, so I hope this was a little bit you know illuminating for you for your process and your workflow it's hard to tell which knee is showing because if you were to look at that shit, I should have taken a reference picture, but the knees are one is lower, one is higher. God damn it, do I really have to open this again? Um, so one is lower, one is higher. Uh, when the knees are bending at different degrees, um, then there's the uh, fact that the hips and the stomach and the breasts are not as aligned as you made them. And these actually look feel like they're pretty close together. This isn't as big as discrepancy as we have with the shoulders. That's why it read as, let me be a bit more specific, you know, this between this line of the shoulder and this line is very high, but between this breast and this breast, it's this tiny little bit of space. So this really did feel like a deformity. That's why it felt like a deformity. So lean to, um, so just zoom in, All right? See how much lower one knee is than the other? Okay. Um, 
I'm not sure why one foot is higher than the other. Uh, that was my bad. Okay, I'm just going to move you down. So they're both on the, on the ground. There we go. Now you can really see one knee is lower than the other. Okay? One was floating. Um, Alright, so that's it for this one. I really can't go in and repaint every single section. All I can do is just, um, just try this, you know, just aligning. Okay. Liquify shot itself. Um, just aligning this shoulder here. Getting rid of that zombie tilt in the eyes, in the head, sorry. And then just finding some symmetry lines in my mind's eye to apply. I know I haven't done that yet, Abu, can you? <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to leave it running in the background, I'm so sorry. Um, I, haven't, I, haven't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> is that a setting you just added or is that in control alt delete? I'm sorry, I, I don't have the capacity between all the shit I have to do. I don't have any more capacity in my brain. All right, just leveling this breast with this breast. And now it just looks like she's leaning ever so slightly, ever so slightly. I'm gonna lower this knee with one side. Balance the hips a little bit. Have you ever seen um, King Tut? They, they redesigned him based on his skeleton. He looked really, really messed up. He had very feminine hips. Because of all the inbreeding, um, he had a very long head. He had, he had uh, what are they called in the legs? Shingles? Um, he had a very, very just problematic body. So let's see. Um, King Tut um, remade. I don't know. Images. There we go. So this is kind of what was going on with yours. See that high shoulder and the low shoulder? It just looked like a deformity to me. And the unusual hip bump, but the knees were balanced. Okay, so um, don't inbreed or else you'll end up wearing a diaper. And, uh, or your kids will. And um, yeah, make sure you do your, so this is the sphere factor. This is the cautionary tale. Ooh, <laughs> never try a drawing without planning lines. Never try it without references and sculptures, or else you'll end up drawing this. Okay. So, before King Tut, after. Yeah, he looked poor incestuous little boy. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, poor dude. Um. Yeah, so I don't think he was poor. I don't think any of us have ever been buried with as much gold as he was. So where he's good, he's, he's doing just fine. All right, for this piece, I actually made portrait studio again. I'm so sorry. Um, so what I wanted to show you is the really, really quickly regions of light. Spooky <laughs> on these models here. So we're getting one of these models. And we're setting it up so that the light is top down, just like in the reference. So the light, there's no shadow on her. See how there's very little shadow on her face? Because the light is in front of her. That's kind of like the tide. It's like late afternoon. The light isn't directly above her head. It's right in front of her head. So a lot of her shadows, though they are still top down, it's top down facing forward. Very strong. Not 90 degrees, more like 30 degrees. Um, so this is exactly what we're seeing here, as you can see by the reference. Um, more like this. Let's look at her neck. The neck always reveals what it is. So the neck has quite a bit of shadow and there's bounce light on either side. But the point is, if you can take a look, this point, this point, and this point, there are trend lines. See that? These are very, very defined, irrefutable triangle right around here. There's another triangle right around here. Oopsie. Another triangle right over here. 
and now features another triangle right over here and then we've got I guess we could just throw a couple of little dudes over here so these would have to do a lot with the light and this is light as well considering the forehead and then you've got just one massive block of light on the nose which you didn't miss but look at how much you had to darken the eyelid cast shadow I mean the eye socket cast shadow just so that you're not value sharing but you had the, uh, the, the bright cast shadow on the side of the nose. So your version, though it may have looked okay, was not enough. And you confuse the light environment in your image. So just take a look how we have these regions. Do you see past this line? So we're just walking down the corner of the cliff. And, oh no, we fell. This is a slight cut. This is exactly what happened to the light. It's just traveling and then it, poof, it just falls. So please don't mix values that are on a completely different side of the cube. This is the front of the cube. This is the side of the cube. These are very, very detailed. And I was talking to one of my students earlier about the importance of knowing what to do with your blocking stage. So you block and blend. You don't blend and then blend what you blended and then blend some more until it kind of looks done. Um, you block and then you blend. If blending is the only way, if blending is the only way you think about your approach or the reference, um, you're never going to get good because you're blending too much. You're not reading geometry. When I grayscale, you'll really see how far off you were. What's the point of doing a reference if you're going to be this, this, this way off? Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just, um, lighten. <clears throat> just lighten this. I'm going to use this exact color and replace the color in her eye sockets with it. And if you have any questions, please uh, please ask them now, even if they pertain to an earlier piece. I'll answer them if I can. And then just before I move on, I'm going to get the eye socket back. So I just want the eye socket back, really. Oops. block then blend don't blend 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 and then blend 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 that's not how we do it we're blocking why do we block I want I want the answer I'm looking for I want that answer right then I'm after, after I'm done doing that see how dark you were you were really drawing like Ursula or some uh, really really scary character next I'm going to draw those trend lines I found Trends of light, trends of features, trends of anything, any kind of gesture. A trend line is a gesture line. Okay. She's got a lot of bounce light all around. She's got bounce light on either side of her neck. She's got her forehead. <clears throat> to have correct values is the result, but... Tom says block to get the values right, then blend to get the edges right. Excellent. Beautiful answer. Um, there's something that blocking does, though. What does it do? When we do studies, should we turn the reference to black and white? Absolutely, any Good question. <clears throat> um, block to identify form. These are all results of blocking, but when we're blocking, what is it we're doing? We're blocking what? We block because we need to consider a light hiding the geometric anatomy. Exactly. Good job. What are we doing? Blocking sets the values where they need to be and also gives us the edges to start with. Um, you can see the proportion. Separating values. And what does that mean per value? What is going on with the value? I love how many people are trying to answer. <laughs> I don't know if I saw the right answer. If you said it already, I haven't seen it. I'm sorry. But the answer is, should I wait? Should I wait a little bit long? Let me see. Blocking lets you find the right value for each individual surface. That's the result. What are we doing when we're blocking? I'm going to wait. So I'm going to keep doing it. Maybe I'll give you the hint. So I'm trying to keep everything consistent. 
all at once. So actually, let me see if I can find what I showed my student earlier, what I did with my student, I actually just deleted it. Um, where is it? Oh, come on, did I delete it? <clears throat> mm. Where are you? I did not delete you. I did not do it. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Where did you go? But. Oh, there was. God damn it. That was right here. So, this is a study I did with my student just now. And. I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to wait for you guys to figure it out. Uh, we're showing the light shadow shape. I would steal Tom's answer and claim it as my own. <laughs> Indicating the light start effects on planes. Establishing shadows and highlights. Blocking equals blocking. And what does that mean? What's the difference between here and here? What are the planes doing? What is happening? We block because it's what Ista tells us to do. <laughs> um, all of these are all of these that you guys said. Does it have to do with not using the darkest darks and re refraining from using lightest whites uh, too early? That's all. What is the benefit of blocking? Yo, Alexa animations need to just need to just leave. <clears throat> Um, so what is it that we're doing? Alexa, weren't you um, trolling my stream before? Didn't we like silence you? Are you going to behave today, Alexa? Mapping the height, sculpting, they're being defined, <laughs> blocking in the planes. There are no gradients in any of these blocks except these. Ignore that. There's no gradients in any of them. The gradients are caused after we blend. That's the answer. So when we're creating this entire triangular region I drew for you, it's just all one plane generally. Because we had to just, it's just obviously not a, not a completely blocked polygon, low poly head structure. But just have a look. All of these have some consistent values. We are blocking. So all the benefits are what you guys described, but exactly what we're doing is singular values per region based on the geometric like vector direction each plane faces. <laughs> They're just being fabulous. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. <clears throat> All right, you can message me if you don't like this, Alexa, we can talk. So, um, the gradients are caused after we blend. Um, so, this is what we are not doing. This is what you forget. You try to go straight for something like this. You try to go straight for it. You don't have one value extending long enough. This is a terrible reference, by the way. Absolutely terrible, low quality. Um, but, uh, you need to stop trying to blend so early and focus on the benefit that blocking brings by keeping your values consistent as long as the plane exists. And the plane is defined by the skeleton, which is human genetics. Okay? Look at this. I'm having one consistent value travel long time. <laughs> travel for a long time. I've been talking like a caveman recently because of the pain. <clears throat> Singular value per plane, and when you blend them together, you find the gradients. And that's it. That's it. So when we, when we find these polygons right over here, we know now because we have edges whether or not they've been too dark. So remember what I showed you guys? Let's do a little experiment. The reason why it helps you, the reason why a polygon, it helps you not use too many darks and too many lights too soon is, let's say you had this value, 
and then you had this slightly lighter value beside it. Doesn't look like there's anything different between each of these, so I'm going to make these a little bit more. It looks like it's the same color, right? Let's get our edge brush. Let's get an even sharper edge brush and carry that all the way in. There is a very, in fact, I'm just going to lasso. There is a very distinct difference between this plane and this plane. That much of a difference that you didn't see because you overblended, because you were too early. This is an extreme example of this. What if a student didn't blend, uh, didn't block, only blended? You know what they would do? Instead of giving their edges a chance to reveal the difference between each value that they use, you know, want to know what they do? Whoop. <laughs> and then you get that problem. This is why blocking in delays extend, like excessive use of black and white because the edge reveals the difference between values. So right now I blocked because just take a look at how dark the cheeks were before I lighten them. All right, and after. Once I blocked, I realized your cheeks were way too dark. All right, so please stop skipping your blocking stage. Please stop assuming that you're advanced enough to go in. You can start blending now. Go ahead, you're done. You're done blocking. Let's just say you did it right the whole time and you're at this level and we speeding past, press fast forward and you're actually blending. You can now blend with, this, with the safety and the knowledge and the security that your values are already where they need to be. And now what you're doing is just sorting them through, making them look more human. I shrink my blending brush near geometric areas. I enlarge it near fatty pockets, organic areas. All right, so you had a lot of problems with your value sharing. And this is what I said earlier with, when I did the two beside each other. Students go crazy. Students are like fish, goldfish, and, and contrast is fish food. <laughs> I don't know any other better way that I, I, this is how I see you guys. Just constant, give me the contrast. Got any more of that contrast? Is blending the same as smudging? Blending is what happens when you smudge. Smudging is a technique, blending is the effect. You blend two things together, you can blend them with a, with a mop. But the point is that they were blended. The technique is the mop. Technique is the tool. So it's just one comes before the other, really. <clears throat> look at my, look, I got my brush. I had a difficult area. My, my soft brush was never going to pull it off. But ask a student, no, the soft brush answers all your questions. All right, I'm creating distinct separations between the planes. Excessive white here, again, terrible reference edges here, edges between the lower eyelid and the eye bag. Okay, and we're just getting so much more realism out of all of this because we're not depending on the super crazy villainous contrast because I'm going to I'm going to step back and you're going to see how much contrast the student was depending on. Because not only the reference was bad, but because, you know, there was no blocking. All they had was their blending and their instances of blending and, and just figuring it out till it looks like a face to show mom and pop. It's never enough. I'm your mom and I'm your pop. <laughs> if I'm not impressed, go back and try it again. Mommy and daddy can't save you from me. You gotta impress me. So that's so egotistical. <laughs> All right, and then I'm just going to raise the smudge here on the eyebrows. Smudge out here for the hairline. <clears throat> yeah, such high exposure, yeah. Okay, does the drawing have to look like the reference? If you're doing a photo step reference study and you know you draw a face, same face syndrome, at this point, yes. You are doing the photo reference for a reason. It should look like your reference. 
if you are fine with likeness, but you have an issue with workflow and you don't know what to do with your edges, likeness wouldn't be the thing I'm looking for in Mark Yuan so much as the fact that you preserved and found radial shading, you interpreted it right. See how I always go back? If you're not smudging, if you're at a point right now in your life where you don't have a smudge brush and you haven't tried this, even though I spent a year solid talking about it, please get yourself into it. Okay. The entire lower eyelid is still very villainous feeling. So that dark makeup thing. Just raising that up. She feels like a good girl, but this one feels like evil. And that's the effect that the makeup had. Okay, and then I'm just, look at all this radial shade you missed around the lips. Look at that. That's the sound I make like a dying animal. Every time you guys, I have to edit that, edit that out, that sounded weird. That's the sound you will hear at, in, at night in the corner of your room when you know you skipped your radial shades like a lazy little, a lazy little butthole. Mm. <laughs> smudge set, this direct smudge sends my life by a Oh, thank you, thank you. So again, I'm just large brush, slowly shrinking. Large brush, slowly shrinking. If your art isn't even good enough to have line dependency yet, should you still practice with sketching lines to uh, just lines, um, with sketching just lines, or should you try painting black and white? Um, you can try painting black and white. You can use guiding lines to help you. You can still have planning lines. <clears throat> um, just over here. Just the part that looks up and then she's got the rest of her mouth so that noise will follow you you will hear it have you ever seen it follows imagine that was me but you know following you <laughs> oh god that movie was scary all right so you kind of lost her likeness in her mouth um you also have lost some of the edges around here okay and then I'm just cleaning up okay so shall we take a look at the before I usually over smudge the uh, the chin area and where it meets up with the rest of the uh, neck so any more questions things are looking it doesn't look like the same girl Completely a different girl. This one just seems a little bit more innocent. This one still looks like she's up to something. Um, but at least we have a more believable light, uh, light environment. And the background should be a little bit lighter. <clears throat> it does something wrong. <laughs> oh, she's hers. <laughs> Man, anyone who misses our, our after hours just misses all the inside jokes. Okay, so we have our before, after. Right. Look at all that blackness you had everywhere. It looked like kind of a negative in the film. You didn't have any any more. This reference is terribly exposed. Um, so the light, sh the lightest part should have been the nose, but just take a look at, you know, really excessively exposed. I mean, sometimes it's nice to have this in a reference, but what I would do, I'm just letting you use my soft brush. I would, um, darken, just keep the nose as the brightest, because I've already done top down so many times, as you, as you guys have as well. I would just keep the nose as the brightest. Take a look at that. And then I would kind of just cancel out by radially adding a shadow leading into the hair. Cancel out that secondary light. Let's see. Okay. So, whoops. So, before. This was actually the real before. And after. 
Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, uh, this is a lot of stuff that I've changed. We balance the values. The face looks like it's three-dimensional. You can add a little bit of extra makeup. It's kind of feeling like a 50s photo. You can add a little bit of contouring makeup here. Correct the nostrils. So let's, let's do that. How do we do nostrils, Mr. Brack? You lay down your edge for the top of the nostril. Lay down the shape of it. Make sure the edge is perfectly clean. And just like that. And then smudge out the rest because we're radially building it. You can radiate values without using the radial technique, the soft brush, if you know what to do. And then uh, just slowly lowering into the deepest part of the nose, the smallest amount of paint. Okay, the nos nostril feels a lot more three-dimensional now, just because we did that technique. So before, after. <clears throat> yeah, it looks way better without the exposure. I mean, let's do it on the photograph as well. Darken. And just kind of, I mean, it's such a, see how, like, this mid-tone goes all the way. This is loss of detail. These kind of references are just terrible. And then, um, right over here. Feels much, much better without the overexposure. Um, so before, after, you missed a major triangle region. Um, I would just do even more. I would restart it and find trend lines, make sure I have some likeness down. Make sure I, my version doesn't look evil or up to something, but kind of similar to her. Though she does, if you look at it with a certain eye, it does look like she's up to something. Hi, Sarek. Uh, I have a question. My studies don't turn out as great. How do I overcome the fear of that? To keep going on. I don't feel as motivated and I stop over, and I stop sketching. Um, uh, what... I said last time, so you might want to reference my previous video from last week and uh, just look at the answer that I gave for that at the end of the video. It's all the way at the end of the video. But I said that motivation and not feeling like it are all luxury. And when you make it a have to, you no longer have the option of not making it there. So right now, you really have to ask yourself, Kenya, are my... Is my art and my practice, are my studies optional for me? If they are optional, you won't do them. For me personally, this is happening to me. My character design sketches right now are op optional for me, but I pine for them. I wish I could just sit down and sketch some care. I think I'm going to cry. I, I miss drawing my dragon riders. I miss drawing the jungle Tarzanas, I miss drawing the jungle Ken characters, I miss all of that. But because it's optional for me, because I'm tired at the end of the day and I'm dealing through a lot, I see the excuses, um, I made it optional. So if it's not optional for you, you would never have asked me this question. You would have still gone until you found some nice result from your, from your studies. And you will see a result, you will. <clears throat> Mind over matter. I know that's lame, but mind over matter. <laughs> can I radially shade backwards, small to big? I mean, you can, yeah. There's no reason not to, but the point is that we're climbing towards the light source, and I think you'll actually, it's like walking backwards, you can, but it's not efficient. <coughs> the ref is from Twin Peaks, you should watch it. Great show. Okay, I've been looking for a good show. Is it okay to line the face and then paint it? Yes, absolutely. A resounding yes. Plan, plan, plan. Um, any more questions? Okay, it's because of the bedroom eyes. Yeah, maybe. It's direct follows. <laughs> um, when I use the smudge tool with the scattered brush you mentioned once, it adds a weird texture and doesn't blend that well. So which one did I mention once? This one, your, your strength has to go all the way down. So let's see if we find a weird texture. Okay, it's on darken. Nope, it's the wrong brush. So this smudge is the one I've always mentioned. Strength is all the way down. 
you're calling this the weird texture, then I'm not really sure what to tell you. If you want a perfect soft brush, it's not really going to happen. All of my brushes have a little bit of texture to them, but I'm pressing lightly and I've blended with really, really low strength. This is high strength. If you did this, <laughs> this is what's going to happen with any of my with any of my smudge brushes. But they leave behind a very particular texture each time. And they're so pretty. <laughs> Um, and they're, they have their own specific role. I, n I don't really have a soft, clean smudge brush. They all have their own role. Um, so this is the one I use because it's very similar to skin. That's the one I use around skin. But look at it at low strength, no texture. So I'm not sure what texture you had on, buddy. Look at it 1%, 1% strength. It still smudges, but it's such a nice little haze. And you do it enough times, you will get the blend. So. Don't you talk shit about my brushes. <laughs> um, let's see. <clears throat> uh, I have kind of developed phobia of soft brush after, after watching your videos because I feel like I have no idea how to use it. Good job. You don't. Um, can, may you give me some explanation how to use it correctly? Um, because I have given you the option of smudge and because I have showed you exactly how to smudge, um, you should not be using soft brush at all. Soft brush is something I use when I'm done a painting, I'm done smudging, I'm done blocking, and I know I need that last little push of smudge, um, but not using smudge tool. That soft glow and haze of shadow and light, I use it texturally. So if you're using it to blend and you're using it for principal fundamentals, like blocking, which is impossible with a soft brush and really, really r ridiculous, or blending, you're not you're using it wrong so yes please maintain that phobia it's a healthy phobia until you feel like you really do need that softness you really do need that push of just skin like like um you know just that that glow or whatever it is you might need to use maybe you're drawing an angelic portrait close-up or something <clears throat> I can maybe buy one of your brushes just for now, sorry. Which do you recommend first? Uh, good question. I, I don't like talking too much about like you know my brushes um, in my videos because at the setting, I've always told you guys what exactly the setting is for brushes, um, which is scatter. But if you like mine, um, um, and uh, uh, you know which brush set would be the best, um, the ones I would prioritize are the ones that promote minimal blending. So not the skin skin set. The skin set is for blending. The blocking set I absolutely recommend. The blocking set is the one that I use every single video and I've been using it since I published it, since before I published it. I've always used my blocking brush. Um, the smudging set like I said, all you have to do is turn on scatter on a really good texture brush, but that means you have to make one. You shouldn't be, you know, looking for brushes constantly, though I do recommend you look and, and observe where your brushes are, and some free brushes are not what they seem to be, that's some more, more stamp. But if you explore Photoshop brush presets and just see what you like, explore the tilt, you can probably find a really nice combination of scatter uh, on the brush itself, on the brush's silhouette and scatter as the setting. If you don't want to be bothered with any of that, I recommend those two of my sets, the smudging brush and the blocking. All right, the smudge set and the blocking dry oil set. Those are the two that I always recommend. Um, <clears throat> I sometimes use size version of soft brush to adjust values sometimes. Is that also bad? Well, today we kind of saw you have a plasticky feel in the, in the Patreon uh, class we did. You tend to have a plasticky feel, so Kira, it might be that you're overusing soft brush. Isabrak, I wasn't talking about your brushes. I was. I just set the default brush to scattered. Uh, thank you for helping me. I was too much. I was using too much intensity. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you have any tips on making your own brushes? I just gave a bunch. Explore. Um, find your hand weight. Um, just just trial and error, really. There's really no way around me telling you a specific style. Make sure that the pen pressure reflects your hand style. Um, always, always, always enable transfer. 
and only when it's like a line brush or something transfer is something we have in real life um, just stuff like that really um <clears throat> I turn into Willy Wonka. Uh, so, for this piece, the person who drew this said that they were trying to do handsome. And to me, because of how much you hooded the eyes, it looks more evil. So let's move with that, because handsome can be a little bit mysterious, which can be evil. So you brought in way too much bounce light. And here... And I'm just going to completely get rid of that. I'm going to darken totally. Okay. And don't worry. I, mean, I am using soft brush, but I'm going to go back and erase its tails. And I'm just carrying the shadow all the way in. And then I'm going to use my smudge brush. Put it back up. And instead of using a line... I'm going to make it an indentation. A line is a wrinkle. All right, I'm going to blend away the lips. Then, new layer. Go back to where it was before. Keep the eyes hooded. Keep them hooded. See how, I, how much soft brush damages? Do you see the damage? Fucking soft brush. And then I'm just going to smudge away. <clears throat> it's okay if it's too dark, because you really are, you know, saying that it is going to be this dark. So, I'm going to move into liquify. And he seems like he's puckering his lips, but trying to smile at the same time. Like he's saying, like that. <laughs> like that. Um, so... That should be taken rid of, and the reason why it looks like he's puckering is because his cupid's bow is bent. When someone smiles, their cupid's bow spreads. So, just keeping that cupid's bow nice and kind of full. I'm not mocking, Ahmed. <laughs> I'm not mocking. <laughs> Okay, so see how he's like, she like that? I'm not Okay. <laughs> You're a liar. You're a dead liar. And then I'm raising this up just like that to be a bit more of a smile. I'm going to give that sm smolder a little bit more. <laughs> and then I'm not sure why his lips are so dark after they've been stretched because a smile is a stretch of the lips. And it kind of lowers the opacity and it's pretty exposed I'm going to just give this lip a little less and then we have our missing radial shades let's see that so he's got his super strong you see how I started dark in this region because I am going to bring the bounce light but there's really no need for us um, oh, dang it there's no need for us to show the eyes too much. You decide on the cast shadow, have the balls to follow through with it. Okay, so we've got, there we go. And then I'll bring in the, the bounce light soon, but really you force the lips to you kind of force the visibility of the teeth. I mean, it's just why he looks old. It's why he looks evil. The, the, the teeth should be this value. Okay, you're kind of forcing them open. And I don't know what, what it is with teeth and students, but it's like their dirty pleasure. <laughs> students love spending time on teeth. They just sit there drawing every tooth, all the spaces in between the teeth, and they end up questioning why their character looks a little ridiculous. It's because the teeth should be the most invisible thing ever. They're not that present. Now he looks mysterious. Now he looks handsome, as you requested in your submission. Okay, he looks like he's, hey girl, kind of thing. And then you've got the nostrils, which have no size to them. <clears throat> 
One of my students is secretly Rob Liefeld. <laughs> Who's that? Okay, so I'm enlarging the nostril. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I don't know why the nostril is a tiny little hole, but it needs to be big enough. And the nostril needs some bounce light. It's very, directly beside a plain reflector. So it's not exempt from bounce and diffusion. The nostril cavity can be a bit darker. And the whole nos um, shadow over here. Okay. Then we've got the side of the nose. The light is coming from the top right, but the side of the nose is dark for some god awful reason. Do your geometries, do your form studies. These are beginner mistakes. And you're trying to do a full-on illustration and you've got these beginner mistakes. When you need to have folds in the cheeks, you can have them as edges, but you can never have them as lines. Okay. And then finally, the bounce light on the areas here. So we can be very, very sneaky and spoopy Actually, let me finish with this. And um, you can give him a little dimple. That'll add to the handsomeness. And just smudging. Okay. And then we're going to just get the soft brush. Soft brush, one of the best ways to use soft brush is for bounce light. <clears throat> That's one of the best ways to use it. So when I'm done, I create the edges where the soft light just stopped. Create edges here, edges here. And then I do that. And I do some whites in the eyes. Actually, I'll do the whites in the eyes first because I've got to edge out. And then I'll do these pieces. Okay, there's no bounce light on this side. And there might be a little bit of extra feathering of the shadow on this side. So this is as much as you can really go. If you're saying there's blue, this whole section needs blue bounce light now. And then the side of the eye, to the side of the nose, part of the eyebrows, whoopsie, side of the eyes, uh, side, of, side of the lips, you already had a little bit of that. Probably the little hairs on the nose, get a little bit of that down side. <clears throat> this is to reveal, actually it needs a lot more than that. I need, this is all to reveal that far side and it really wouldn't do much else. Then I'm going to get a whole new layer and just make the whole far side a little blue. And then erase. See how good soft brush is? But you still got to follow up with an eraser, so really how useful is it? You know what I'm saying? I'm not even I'm not, I'm not even sure I like any of this. I'm not even sure I want any of this blue. I don't feel like you need it. I feel like it's a lot more mature to leave one side lit up. But um, okay, so I hope this was what you needed to see for the handsome. You weren't really going about it the right way. It had nothing to do with the elf and the ogre. You are dealing with a handsome man, so you're not. Um, doing any ogre at all, you're doing only slight amount and you need that one last color. I think you have way too much pink. I'm actually going to get desaturation tool and use it all over the areas where the light is touching because you had way too much red. There should be more gray. Okay. 
Yeah, the blue is kind of over the top. I would like get rid of it. I mean, good call. I would just get rid of it. Let me just make it 40, see what I can get. If you get rid of it, that, that blue rim will actually have an impact. See that? So the blue rim makes a lot more sense when you have no blue. Okay, so let's take a look at the before and after. Before. Uh, before, <laughs> after. See what I mean by the he? Yeah, that means making that sound. I'm so sorry for my sound effects today. Before, after. Okay, fuck this blue in particular. <laughs> um, so your smile wasn't complete. It was like, eh, like it was like someone who didn't know how to smile was asked to smile. Um, probably, yeah, and um, then the lips were too out because of what the Cupid's bow was doing, and now he's just a debonair. <laughs> I'm only a woman. I, I, this is why I don't draw men. I don't know if you guys have ever asked the question, why doesn't Isterac draw men? <laughs> because I start flirting with my drawing. <laughs> My face is red. <laughs> um, anyway, <clears throat> the sound effects help get the point across. Okay, the sound effects are all we come back. Thank you. <laughs> Didn't even miss the soundboard. His expression is more creepy now, or is that just me? Um, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't really see the creeper. I I don't see anything creepy. It might be because the smile is a little bit bigger than before and big smiles are creepy, but he's smiling. So maybe one thing that'll help reduce the creep is my face is actually, I'm blushing. I actually feel myself blushing. <laughs> I'm such a, I'm such a, I'm such a fangirl, man. Anyway. Maybe if you straightened it and it was less, a little less la la and more like this, then you're good. But that smolder thing is, is what you need. You might want to brighten up the area under his hat a little bit more, but it really adds to the mystery. I think you are doing way too much with his hat, with the low part of his hat. Just, just keep it dark. And then whatever is nearby is just reflecting the nearby bounce light near it. But you chose a very dark setup here, a very sharp shadow, which means it's stage light. And which makes sense, but um, be careful. Before, after. All right. Um, is the drawing men Pygmalion, anyone? <laughs> yeah. Um... He looks like a Victorian age fuckboy. <laughs> Hi, Levi. He is creepy because Saint Ed painted it. <laughs> he did? Oh, I didn't notice. He looks either worried or judgmental to me. Well, I raised the eyebrow because that's like, hey, girl, what's up, girl? Which is why my face is red. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, so last little recap on all the announcements. Go to istabrak.com. To join the community, click on the little Google Plus icon. To get any of my brushes, they're available on the store for anyone wondering. And um, it's direct.com, Google Plus icon. Go to the announcements and go here. Ancient Weapon Character Design Toolkit is available on the community tab. Download it over here. The um, Sorry, that's the user guide. This is the uh, resource pack and download it. It has all your instructions in there. The due date is the 8th. This might change, this might not, but I don't know. It might be too late for you guys to join, but if you hustle, uh, have some you know thumbnails done by the, by the weekend, post, render between, I guess, the weekend and the 8th, you might be able to get in uh, on a critique and have your work showcased. It's not going to be so much as a critique hour, but we're definitely going to be critiquing certain design choices you made and um, helping you, you know, giving you tips on if it's going to be a weave might just be me 
um, on uh, how to approach the painting a little bit better. And some people are going for a full illustration, some people are um, doing just a character design. And for those interested in supporting on Patreon, Patreon's always been available as a stream for support. Uh, so for those who are interesting, I'm aim aiming for a thousand patrons. I know that's crazy, but I've been just promoting it and seeing where this goes. It might take a couple of years. And that's it. Thank you everyone for joining today. I don't have time for any more questions, but if you do have questions, um, just save them for the next class or just make a post on it on the Google community po uh, right over here. Someone else might be able to answer you. And uh, that's it. I will see you guys on Thursday, the first at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Bye, everyone.